Welcome back. In this video, I'll be going over a utility data pack that allows you to drop items out of a player's inventory. There is three modes currently implemented. There is the drop all, then a whitelist and a blacklist mode. Drop all just drops all items out of the player's inventory uh, immediately. Whitelist drops specific items or drops all items that are not on the list and blacklist drops items that are on the list. So for this example, I just have a whitelist and a blacklist set up for stone. So whitelist drops everything but stone and then blacklist only drops a stone. So that's just sort of two basic examples. Uh, how to set up a blacklist here uh, is uh, you go into the functions process and then there is a blacklist and a whitelist function. The blacklist and whitelist functions are fairly similar. The only real difference is um, you're either setting zero for whitelist and one for blacklist. The, an actual entry is only what is within these curly brackets here. So your whitelist and blacklist can be any data that's on an item, uh, whether that data be an ID, a slot number, or just sort of miscellaneous tag data on the item. It can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, you can also add s multiple whitelists and blacklists if you want. I'll get on how to do that whenever I actually explain the functions of this. Uh, this whole thing will be available in a GitHub repository in the description down below. Uh, but now I'm going to begin explaining the functions, and this is going to be sort of disjointed as all of my function explanations sort of are. Um, so the only difference between the all whitelist and blacklist uh, call functions is the score here. The actual mode is zero for all, one for whitelist, and two, two for blacklist. Um, and that uh, then just runs a separate function. So if you go into functions and then drop here, this is where the actual tech begins. Uh, first of all, I just start by resetting storage. Uh, this could all be done in one data modify command, but I like to have my stuff sort of spread out, and especially because this is going to be public use on a GitHub repository, I thought I'd sort of spread things out and make it look nicer than what I normally do. Um, so this just sort of resets some data. We have an in here, and then we have some other just miscellaneous stuff that I'll get into its use uh, later, but all we need to know sort of is like the in and the hold. Uh, for for right now, uh, I write the player's inventory into that in array uh, right here, and then we're off onto processing the inventory recursively. Uh, and then after I recursively process the inventory, I also restore the inventory, uh, which makes it so the items that are being dropped actually get removed from the player's inventory, and then any items that um, or if necessary, it finds any items to drop, it'll then run a drop function. Um, so let's get into the actual recursively processing the items. Um, so we're going to go to process and loop. And uh, we start out here by just moving the first object in that in array into a hold value, as you can see right here. That's just so I can work with it. And then I store the slot number of that item the hold value into a scoreboard so then I can detect a range and then based on that range set a number and that number then will write an output to a specific thing. If you're familiar with Schulkerbrock's restoration tech you'll know that you have to split items up into different things so the slot counts match up. I'm, I'm not going to get into how uh, Schulkerbrock's inventory restoration works because I've discussed that in the past um, and you can watch videos on that so I'm pretty much going to skip over a lot of like the uh, the actual inventory restore thing here. I'll just show that here in a second. Uh, restore inventory. Uh, I just sort of write the data into a shulker box and then restore it. I'm, I'm not going to get into the tech of that, uh, but I will talk about how I use that sort of same exact thing to drop items as well. Uh, so we have our stuff here, uh, which sets the output position of where it's going to go based on that. Uh, and the thing I actually want to talk about is the drop tech, which is sort of the, the interesting little bit of this. Uh, there's also the, the whitelist and blacklist, which I've shown. Let's uh, process whitelist and blacklist. Basically, what these do is override that output value. Uh, it'll This value here, which we run to 
drop if it's zero, uh, because one, two, and three go to hop our inventory and armor respectively. Zero always drops, so the whitelist and blacklist just take advantage of that by setting it to zero if they find something in their list or don't find something in their list respectively. Um, or I don't know if respectively, wh whatever. So that's what the whitelist and blacklist does. Um, and then once the, the loop is done, once it finds the items, so let's actually talk about the, the drop here. Uh, these are pretty much the same as any inventory restore tech. The drop thing here is a little bit different. So if I go to functions, drop, or no, it's going to be functions, process, output, and then drop. Sorry. Uh, I start out by storing the result of getting how many uh, objects there are in the current output array. I have out.drop.current, which is sort of a temporary holding array for all of the out or all the items that are going to be dropped by the system. Uh, and I store that as the slot. So basically I just fill up the shulker box and write the corresponding slot. And once I get the, the slot value written, uh, I then uh, append it into the, the array. And then if there is 27 objects in that array, it will copy the current. So if I do drop and write to queue, um, it'll then copy that, uh, that array of objects into another array. So I have an array array, just an array of arrays, uh, and then I clear out the current array. Uh, and this is just so the shulker box doesn't get overfilled if I do a drop all. That's why I can do something like, um, I don't have a helmet, so you'll have to bear with me in not having a, a completely full inventory, but this wouldn't be possible normally if I just do slash function, that's function drop all. Uh, if I didn't separate it into arrays uh, and then split the array every 27 objects, then it would overload the shulker box and not all items would drop. Uh, so that's sort of what that does. Um, and then once this is all done, once this uh, loop function here is done, I then restore the inventory and then I append the current into the drop queue. And then if there is anything in the drop queue stacked or nested arrays, I then run the drop drop queue function, which is a looping function which writes the first drop queue array into the items array of the shulker box that I use. And then I do a loot mine with the same thing that I used to do the actual inventory restoring. Uh, so if I do restore here, you'll see I, I'm using a, a debug stick here. And since it's the dynamic output, it will output the items as if you like broke a chest or something. Um, and then this just repeats itself. So that's more or less how this system works. As I said, this will be available in the description down below. Uh, I did mention shortly that you can add more modes, like you can have diff, uh, more whitelists uh, or blacklists than just a one whitelist and one blacklist. All you have to do is add additional modes here uh, and it'll support those sort of overrides to the, the drops. But uh, yeah, that should be everything. I'll have a, a written explanation of how this works uh, in the readme of that GitHub repository as well. So hopefully, uh, if you didn't follow this video that well or you didn't feel like watching the entire thing, uh, you can go ahead and read how to use this there. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will catch you all next time.